Black Bright broadcasting out of the UK into your homes. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my home. Um, if it's the first time you're passing through, please like, subscribe and share. Um, I think the HMRC, the tax office, is firing on all cylinders. So I'm just alerting, especially self-employed, especially freelancers. Freelancers, they used to get away with such a lot. Like they call they call freelancers for a reason, and so now the tax office is coming down heavy. I don't know how many of you have heard about the IR thirty five. Well, just a couple of pages. And I'll let you know. The IR thirty five tax change captures freelancers and tax dodgers. The intermediaries legislation or IR35, as it is now known, first came into force in April 2000 to prevent workers from disguising themselves as freelance contractors as a way to pay less tax. Former Chancellor Philip Hammond resuscitated the legislation in November 2016 as a way to generate extra HMRC income by introducing it into the public sector. The anti-avoidance legislation targets contractors providing services through a limited company when in practice they are doing the same work as employees. In HMRC's eyes, it, if a service provided by a contractor resembles full-time employment, the contractor falls under IR35 and should therefore pay tax like a full-time employee. Small businesses have called for HMRC to delay its controversial IR35 tax change, which is meant to clamp down on employees passing themselves off as freelancers in order to avoid tax. The government has already restricted freelancers working full-time in the public sector as contractors, which means they pay less tax than equivalent employees. As employers are the ones who face penalties if, the categories full if they categorise full-time contractors wrongly, it makes hiring sole traders less appealing. So, you know, they're always making it difficult. Anybody's trying to do a little hustle or thing, they're just closing every avenue. So yeah, if there's any sole traders out there, I'm sorry for you. Anyway, how to wind up your personal service company ahead of IR35 legislation. So now they're suggesting that you wind up the personal service com company. It's obviously got implications, but IR35, do your homework, check it out. I'm not going into the details. I'm just alerting you, making you aware, raising awareness, which is what I do. OK, now the Treasury wants to extend its IR35 legislation to the private sector in April 2020. And that's the same as making tax digital legislation, which I've just posted. Mike Cherry, National Chairman of FSB, that's the Federation of Small Businesses, said the self-employed certainly don't need an IR35 rule change that makes hiring contractors less attractive. We've already heard noises from big corporates to, to indicate that if this change does take effect in April as planned, they're going to pull the plug on sole traders. So if you're a sole trader working for public authority or local authority or corporation, you're going to be in trouble because they're putting all the onus on the, on the, um, on the corporates. And they don't want to be asking you about your tax. They don't want to have anything to do with it. That's why they employ sole traders and freelancers. The, the, the freelancers and the sole traders, they're supposed to have the headache of, you know, dealing with their tax, paying their tax and all that kind of stuff. Now, 
what the tax office is saying is that the people who are hiring you, they now have that headache on your behalf. So now they're saying, well, we don't want, we're not going to employ them then. If we've got that headache, we don't want to have anything to do with it. So you know how many sole traders are going to be out of work? How many freelancers are going to be out of work? However, it does not recognise the loss of full-time employment benefits a contractor must account for, such as sick pay, parental leave and holidays. That's the whole point. When you're a freelancer or self-employed, you don't get the benefit of all those holidays and sick pay. So you're supposed to get a little bit more to cover that. But it looks like the IRS... IRS? Why does the IRS? That's America, isn't it? HMRC, it looks like they want to take every little penny that they can get. Anyway, what are the IR35 changes? In 2017, the government made changes to IR35 for public sector contracts to make the employer responsible for determining whether a contractor falls within the IR35 or not. For private sector contracts, up until now, the contractor was responsible for determining whether they fall within IR35. However, the, the off-payroll working rules are being extended to include the private and voluntary sectors in just six months' time. Well, it's five months' time now, because this came out in October. Under the latest IR35 reforms, private sector employ employers will now be responsible for assessing whether or not contractors need to pay income tax and national insurance contributions. What does it mean to be inside the IR35? If you're deemed to be inside the IR35, then for tax purposes, HMRC considers you to be an employee of your client and therefore liable to pay the same PAYE tax as an ordinary full-time employee. The proposed changes to IR35 have been paralysing to freelancers, contractors and locums up and down the country. The so-called IR35 rules are designed to end disguised employment. The term for people who present themselves as off-payroll freelancers and who tax authorities believe should be treated as employees. The use of personal service companies allows contractors and companies to reduce their tax and national insurance bills. Extending IR35 is expected to raise $3.1 billion in extra revenue for the exchequer, for the exchequer, for the exchequer between 2020 and 2024, what are they going to do with that money? Play bonuses, I bet. Four out of ten sole traders said their income fell between July and September. And six in ten do not expect their trading performance to improve between now and January 2020. Indeed, more than one in ten are braced for it to deteriorate markedly. The self-employed find it particularly hard to raise finance and those that can do so face borrowing rates of 6% or higher compared with the current bank rate of 0.75%. The Federation of Small Business, FSB, surveyed 1,274 small businesses, business owners and sole traders in September. So there you have it, folks. They're getting us left, right and centre. That's all for now. Bye-bye.